Okay, so let's talk about uh, the milestone four. Uh, let me share my screen with you. All right, so uh, milestone four. Let me just um, bring over here. Everything's recording. Uh, let me just bring up the. Oh, there we go. And voila. Oh, let me turn off that light. My apologies. Hold on for a second. All right. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the, uh, the the project. Where do I put this thing? There you go. I'm going to put it up there. So uh, uh, mile, uh, first of all, any questions you have uh, for the first three milestones before I explain what uh, uh, MS4 is doing? Any questions? All right. Also, I have to p start the poll to make sure everything's good. Just a second. Let me. And so, any questions about the first three milestones? All right. Okay. Good. So uh, uh, let's uh, continue with the c uh, with uh, explanation of how uh, we are supposed to do the uh, milestone four. So down to this point, uh, hopefully when milestone three is completed and everybody's done with it, um, we already have uh, uh, the object. So let me just go down here. Actually, milestone three, I think. There you go. We already have I product and we have item. So we have these two things, and this uh, perishable thingy over here is not correct. I have to fix this picture. So let me see if I have it here. Just a second. The um, the class diagram over there is not correct. This is the class diagram. Let me just correct it right now as we are talking. So let me just go with selecting to uh, copying to clipboard and okay copy I'm gonna bring paint up paste over here so this is the correct one and also I need to clean this one up there was an eraser here. This is something that I have just done it for myself that is not needed, so I'm wiping it up. This is some private thing that I created to make my job easier, but you don't have to do it because I uh, simplified the, the project. So uh, uh, let me save this. So Alt F A, save as. We'll go to 244 dev project uh, images and there you go classes.png just replace it so it's going to come up more later and you'll see well, how it's going to happen okay so uh, that's that yeah so uh, this is uh, what is it going to be and it's a, probably a good idea if I open the local one instead of this one so we can actually see it as we uh, go through it so let me open up the, the the local one instead of the thing and I'm going to update it afterwards so project and here's the readme file this is the local one all right so there you go um, let me make it a little bigger okay ms4 MS3 actually there you go now so um, the, the perishable class that you are creating out of item uh, essentially uh, what it does is uh, simply uh, 
gets an item and adds an expiry and handling instructions to the item. So all the things that item has, Perishable will use. Uh, what it does is going to be this. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to explain. So it, exp it adds an expiry date. Uh, that is a, a date object that you already created. Uh, and then it creates a dynamic C string, creates a, uh, a character pointer to handle a dynamic C string, which is handling. These, this, these are handling instructions. Uh, it um, uh, provides rule of three. To, first of all, uh, perishable is created. Uh, let me just uh, uh, bring it up and... Uh, project and bring it down like this so I will I can bring it up when I need it so let me bring it over here and let's go to MS4 so I'm gonna actually go through it using uh, uh, the uh, features that we have uh, using the uh, explanation that I have on the file so uh, we know exactly what we are doing so as we said uh, it inherits from the the item class perishable uh, a perishable item unlike an item has an SQ that starts with digits one two three so what uh, identifies and differentiates with respect to records on a file is that every single perishable item starts with SKUs whose uh, first digit um, has the SKUs whose first digit uh, start with either 1, 2, or 3. But if it's 4 to 9, then that's uh, a non-perishable item, a, a regular item. Uh, are we okay with this? Do we understand this? Oh, sorry. Are we okay with this? Okay, so so essentially, when later on, when you are doing the next uh, uh, part of the thing, you are doing the uh, completing the project. When you are reading from a rack from from the file, all you need to do is to pick the first character of the f the record, see if it's one, two, or three. If that's the case, then you create a perishable item. If it's not those, then you create a regular item. So the like that, uh, everything goes um, uh, perfectly. Uh, so that, uh, and yeah, uh, so that's going to be that. And then you're going to have an expiry date, which is going to uh, specify exactly when is the expiry date of this perishable item. And handling instruction is an optional thing that you're going to have. So it could have a handling instruction or not have a and the handling instruction. So the uh, handling instruction uh, is, uh, could be null and that uh, perishable item null or empty string and that perishable item still is a valid perishable item. It's a perishable item that doesn't have any handling like do not keep it in cold table. Like you don't need to mention how is it supposed to be handled. So the construction is done only through a default constructor that sets everything to uh, uh, empty so uh, the date knows how to set itself to default so it sets it to the current date so you don't need to do anything with it but you need to uh, make sure that uh, when the object is defaulted it actually uh, sets the handling to uh, an all uh, value uh, that's that uh, apply the rule of three, make sure that everything is copied and assigned properly between uh, if a perishable item is assigned to a perishable item uh, or it, it is copied. You've already done that for item. All you need to do is to uh, make sure that uh, when a perishable item is being copied, its base is being copied too. And when a perishable item is being uh, uh, assigned to another perishable item, uh, the, the base of it is assigned to and everything is set uh, properly. Uh, are we okay with rule of three? You gotta have uh, one query that is going to you are going to add to this thing uh, to perishable item. So perishable item only has one additional method that uh, the um, 
the item doesn't have and that query returns the expiry date so uh, you got to have a query uh, that returns the expiry date and the name of the query will be expiry so you can see it over here actually it's expiry you see that so expiry is the query that you're going to create uh, and this expiry will return what it's going to return is a constant query that returns a constant reference of the expiry date so it doesn't return it by value it returns an, a constant reference of it then for the rest of the method so uh, are we okay with the query maybe i need to i should uh, uh, actually name it properly uh, so we know um, so let's actually uh, put the name over here okay yeah let me j i have an important telephone to call to answer my apologies sorry i have to pause let's resume all right so uh let me just uh, um, kind of um, uh, fix that right over here so it's there is no confusion about it so i'm gonna open this one and set the project so uh, we are going to milestone four everything got this is everything disappears for some reason uh, we need this one and we need this one here perfect all right so we were talking about We were talking about milestone four and the query. So, so I'm gonna actually write the query. So I'm gonna say query. I'm gonna say create a constant query called, and I'm gonna call it expiry. So to make sure that expiry that returns the reason uh, that I'm doing this is that because it's being used in main, so it's not an optional name that you can create. You have to actually uh, name it properly. So let's refresh this and go back to milestone four. There you go. So uh, create a constant query called expiry that returns a constant reference of the expiry date. Okay. Um, so uh, we are okay with the expiry hopefully good thing about this overview session is that if I see anything is not good I'm, I, I just fix it on the fly and um, when it goes up it's got to be much more clear for everyone so uh, the rest of the methods you are going to do are all virtual overwrite that's why you don't see any signature for any of these because you already have the signature from its parent so you are just overwrite the virtual um, functions for the parent read sku um, the the sku of the item qualifies the entry between uh, 40 with the, for those who start with four to nine this one you overwrite so read sku of a per perishable item will test it be between 10,000 and the 34 39,999 to guarantee that the values are between one and nine. So that's read SQ overwrite. Are we okay with that, with read, read SQ overwrite? All right, now save. What does save do? So the what you do in, in, in save is you first call the save of uh, uh, the base class, the parent class. Also, let me have my cheat sheet over here so I can make sure that I'm explaining it properly. There you go, yeah. So the very first thing that you do over here, you will call the save of the base class, which is item. So first the item part will save itself. Then 
you write one tab to separate the rest of the stuff that you're adding to an item because perishable item has everything that item has within it ad with an addition of few things so first you what you will do you will call the save item of the base class you write one tab then you write the handling instructions only if uh, it is not null S or not empty so if it's an empty string or it's null you don't write anything okay uh, but if there is anything in there then you write it after you do that writing or not writing you're gonna write another tab so if the handling instructions are empty you're gonna have two tabs back to back and then after that you print an unformatted copy of the expiry date the reason I'm mentioning unformatted copy of the expiry expiry date is that uh, the uh, save method is a constant method so you cannot change the uh, format of the expiry date to unformatted and then write it because if you do that you are changing the owner therefore save will protect you and uh, the, the constant of save will protect you and won't let you do that because of that first you have to make a copy of the expiry date into another date change that date to unformatted and then write it uh, are we okay with this and all these things happen only if your perishable item is in a good state if it's not in a good state you don't do anything at the end, obviously, you're going to return the I stream uh, or O stream, whatever uh, is OF stream, whatever it's returning. So you're going to actually do that. There is no problem with that. Uh, for load, you first uh, call the load of the base class. And then after doing that, that's going to read everything for the item. Now it remains two things that you have to read for the perishable item. So what you will do, uh, that reading the base class will read everything go to the end and uh, bypass the uh, the tab too so what you do the next thing you're going to do over there is actually dynamically reading the instructions up to tab whatever it is so and then hold it in the handling pointer that you have but you have to remember because load can be called at any time you have to make sure that you first delete the already existing handling before you do this after you do that you ignore uh, it ob ob obviously a, t a tab will be ignored so you can go to the date then you read the date and after that you ignore the new line and you're done so uh, if during this process the ice stream failed you set the state of the item to uh, fail but if it didn't fail you just uh, go out and, and uh, uh, at the end, no matter what, you return the IF stream and you're done. Are we okay with the load? Oh, sorry. Are you okay with the load? All right, good. So. Excuse me, Professor. Yes, go ahead. Is the meeting being recorded? The meeting... Ah, not on big blue button, but locally it is. So okay, thank you. So, so yeah, locally it is being recorded. So, probably uh, I'm gonna post the YouTube one. <laughs> but it is okay. So we, we are okay. But thank you very much for uh, noticing that part. Anyways, so yeah, so uh, that's the load and the display overload. What, what do we do when we are actually displaying? Um, uh, the display. Uh, first you have to make sure that you are in a good state if you are not in a good state you're gonna print the the state so if perishable item is in a bad state the state is printed instead of the the content of the perishable that's what the display does uh, if it's not then you get it if it's if the if the amps if if the state is actually in a good state then you go to the next step that you check if you are in a linear uh, uh, display which means you're going uh, to to print it one line so you can have it a, as a list if you are in a linear mode <coughs> uh, you are uh, what you're gonna do is first you display the item the uh, the base item so the base base item will display itself then 
if the handling instructions exist it means that if there is something you don't print it you do not print the handling instructions but what you do over here um, uh, actually let me just see uh, I'm gonna um, uh, print it and see if there is anything missing in here I'm running the tester to make sure that the output is correct so so that's that one so so this is the tester that tests at the beginning so I just want to see uh, what is it going to be the description is this one so that's 22 2 22 12 12 and then only uh, oh oh I did it wrong uh, the price is 22.22 and then 22 12 12 uh, so let's put something in here uh, one two three four we are supposed to we are not supposed to do this I just want to test something yeah so yeah so what happens is that uh, a bar is print uh, actually the, I think the bar is printed by, by the item so we don't need to print any bar okay good so we are good now so let's continue uh, so if the handling in instructions exist you just print one asterisk to for the user to know that this item that is being listed over here has a handling instruction to read later on you don't print the handling instruction if it doesn't have a handling instruction you're going to print a space so if you look at the linear way that is printed so this one let's say it doesn't have a handling instruction therefore that's space this one has a handling instruction you do not print the handling instruction you just put an asterisk beside the beside the date and after that you print the date and uh, that's it um, are we okay with this if it's not linear and you are printing a descriptive version of the of the items information print uh, perishable items information first you print perishable so uh, item prints AMA item what you do you in here first you print perishable and then print the item therefore the title is going to be perishable it AMA item that's going to be the type uh, the, the the top uh, name over there then you display the base class therefore it shows that the base class then you uh, go to new line print the exp uh, print expiry date uh, column and then print the expiry date in front of it in a formatted way and then if handling instructions is not null then you're gonna print the label over here for it otherwise you don't even print the label so if handling instructions is, is not null or and not empty you print handling instructions and you dump the text in front of it whatever it is and a new line is printed at the end so essentially the one that is no uh, uh, printable ex uh, uh, hand handling instruction is gonna say only perishable AMA item and shows it like that the one that has handling instructions it shows everything and at the end it shows handling instruction keep away from direct light for example something like that so that is going to be the display are we okay with this These are very, very simple functions to write. Uh, this MS4 um, should not take you more than two hours to finish. So uh, if you follow the instructions properly, seriously, at two or two, three hours max, you, you want to work on this. It's not, a, it's not a difficult thing to go. The only thing you need to make sure that you don't make a mistake about is when you're actually uh, uh, reading and loading to make sure that you first delete the handling instruction and then dynamically allocate into it to make sure everything is good and if you took my advice and did the function implementations that I asked you to do in utils then it's gonna help you a lot in here 
so um, and you can always use the implementations we had in our utils in a lecture so in utils i created few functions uh, to, to teach you how utils is done if you want you can use any any of those with, with absolutely no problem if you are not my student though um, uh, and you are using uh, the utils that i provided for my students make sure you cite it um, because it's not from your teacher it's another source so if you're not my student make sure you cite it that this function was uh, received from this and this and ex explicitly mention what the source for it was so they know that you have used that one my students don't need to cite it because I'm your teacher and you're supposed to get my code but uh, if you're not my student make sure you actually cite it are we okay with this all right so now read overwrite how do we overwrite read first you call the read of the parent so that's pretty simple then you delete the handling instructions and um, you make sure you set it to null because uh, the object you're reading it's possible that doesn't have a handling instructions so uh, you got to make sure that you do that okay so and then after that uh, you uh, uh, um, uh, get the, the expiry date you print expiry you get the expiry date you ignore a new line because uh, uh, you are real reading uh, then you're going to prompt handling instructions and you enter to display so this handling instructions shows uh, what the instructions are uh, enter to display is the one that you're going to actually peek take a look for the next character that is coming in if it's backslash n it means there are no handling instructions just leave it empty um, but if something comes in then you get it and put it in the handling instructions so if so peak the next character if it's backslash in just uh, 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 ignore the backslash in and be done with it but if uh, it is not peak uh, if it, it is not backslash in then read uh, the value um, dynamically and i'll kind of demonstrate and walk through the code step by step so you're going to see exactly how it's going to work are we okay with the read all right okay so um, the next thing i'm going to do over here would be um, i'm going to walk through this and then i'm going to uh, have a kind of a uh, um, what should we call it? Um, um, a, a sneak peek to what the final project is going to look like so you know what you're going to deal with soon. So uh, first let's do this. Uh, so uh, as the program runs, um, it resets everything to original. You have done that in MS3. So it literally gets the data from the original file and puts it in date. That, that or that, that then it goes to entry and save so it is exactly like uh, what you had for the uh, for ms3 but uh, obviously it doesn't go that much in detail because you've already tested the item we know item was working i only test the parts that this one is needed and uh, so there are no tests on data entry over here only for the sku so we're going to come in uh, open up the file create a, uh, a perishable in iProduct making sure that uh, your virtual functions are set properly and um, these are the values that you're going to enter um, sorry they're um, too small for some reason I have no idea why this has happened like this let me just uh, run it again stop or maybe because this was open already Oh, this is running. This is the first. Yeah, this is running. So let me just go through this. Okay. Um, let's go. Hopefully this time it's correct. S okay, so it prints this. That's better. So, uh, and then it reads SKU. So this is where uh, reading SKU is tested to make sure that you actually get the proper values for that 
so it goes out of range with that one and out of range but this is a valid uh, SKU for a regular item for this one it just it has to fail then we're gonna have one 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 over here and then it goes in here and prints everything in a descriptive way so it's gonna print uh, uh, sorry it's not uh, st it will start getting the rest of it uh, of the uh, of the item which is going to be uh, extra strength uh, Advil tablets and it goes like that quantity needed at 22 on hand 2 22.22 is the price and 22 12 12 is the date I'm not validating anything over there here we want to make sure that the enter works so you're gonna just hit enter you're not gonna enter any instructions and that's it so now it shows it uh, in a descriptive way so as you see everything is set properly it shows perishable and goes through it and now it shows it in linear now it shows it in linear no asterisk over here because there are no handling instructions saves it into the file and then reads the next one for the next one we are going to have uh, uh, we're going to read the SKU let me get out of this one we're going to read the SKU and that's one two three four five then Advil oh, then uh, reads the uh, the rest of the information so Advil and then three 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 33.33 12, 12. now for the uh, handling instruction we're going to say keep in room temperature okay so we're going to add that one and hit enter now we're going to show it first uh, in descriptive way so it actually shows the handling instruction it tells what it is then we put it in linear and all it does it puts an asterisk over here instead so there is nothing over there and saves it in a file flushes it and gets out and deletes the uh, the what we had now it goes uh, into the descriptive part it just reads the file to make sure that your file is written properly one by one shows all the uh, records in a file so now your save and load are tested too it comes out and returns and the test is over and that's all any questions about the test <coughs> all right so now that we have all these things what uh, the latest one's gonna look like so uh, essentially after all these things are done you have all the tools to do let me just show you let me uh, set a startup project. Set a startup project. <coughs> so you have all the tools to complete your, uh, I think it was milestone two that you actually created the menu for it. Okay? So that's your menu that you're going to create. Uh, the, the, the first one is going to be. Uh, seven and one so you create seven and one because with seven you are going to load the data file <coughs> so whatever the data file is you're going to read all its items now the tools are there to read the perishable and non-perishable one uh, and I regular items all in an array of i products so first uh, i'm going to open the uh, so i'm going to select seven over here which is opening the data file and in here i'm going to say data dot that <coughs> so now it actually says data dot that and it works with that so you can actually change the data file and uh, create different types of shipping stuff if you want to then if you say list items it lists ID items that you have inside the, the file and uh, waits uh, for a row to be entered for to display or zero to continue so if you want if the user wants to see the details of anything in the list they can select the row if they don't want to they just 
enter zero and get out so if I want to see for example what are the details of number six I'm gonna put over here six and hit enter now it shows the details of that one and goes back out if I click on one again uh, hit on one again it goes back to list and if I don't want to see anything I hit zero and I go out so that becomes the number seven and one that's a uh, first submission 10% worth it then all the other ones are done all the ones that you have over here they already have you already have everything all the function the functionalities that you want for number two three four and five to actually do the uh, implementation so you can add an item so you simply literally just you, you, you hit two and hit enter it says which one you want non-perishable or perishable so you create a mini menu to show again uh, if you want to sh uh, add a perishable you cr you hit one and then perishable entry happens if you do two then non-perishable so for example if I want to create a non-perishable one uh, so I'm gonna go over here number two okay and I'm gonna hit over here one two three four five and I hit enter it's gonna tell me that uh, uh, 444 is already in a system try updating the quantity instead so which means if you enter an SKU that already exists it says it's there update its quantity therefore you can go number four now and I say I want uh, uh, the ones that have so 444 was uh, flashlight so in here I'm gonna search for flash and it's gonna show me the uh, the flashlight over here so row number to display uh, <coughs> details are zero to continue I'm gonna say zero to continue I don't want to see the details I just want to update it okay and now it's gonna say enter SKU I'm gonna enter one two three four five hit enter and it starts uh, uh, asking you what you want to do you want to add the uh, uh, the quantity or you want to reduce the quantity or exit so if I click on a hit on add it's gonna tell you what is the amount that you want to add I have already zero I'm gonna say say I got 250 and I'll add to it now if I list the items you will see that flashlight has 250 so that's the add remove item is the exact same thing so if you want to remove uh, uh, the item it removes the item from the system and this is a difficult one you have to shift everything back up so for example I want to remove the the flashlight from here I don't want it anymore I'm gonna uh, hit on remove item so three is remove item three is remove item and it says what you want to uh, remove I'm gonna say uh, the one that has flash in it it shows that one is you want to see the detail or you want to go uh, zero to continue so I'm gonna say zero I know what the details are now enter the SKU to to remove one two three four five and I hit enter and uh, it's gonna say are you sure I this is what you are removing you want to really remove that you're gonna say yes or zero to exit if you said and all these are menus so you don't do anything extra over here it just creates little menus that uh, create these uh, uh, functionalities so um, if I say yes over here it will remove the flashlight from the system if I say zero it won't so I'm gonna say one and it removes it and when it removes it if I list it again you'll see there is no flashlight in here so what happens in the array it removes the flashlight and shifts everything back up reduces the number to one so this is uh, a kind of a tricky one to rem uh, to create um, it's possible that when I put those things in I'm gonna put it in the order of difficulty so you do first seven and one and then two and you go uh, further ahead update quantity is very simple sort is very simple so if I want these things to be sorted I simply go five over here five um, and oh what did I do oh sorry uh, <laughs> zero I, it, I, I by, by mistake I, I displayed stuff so I'll go five to uh, to sort um, and it's gonna say sorted and if I list it over here you'll see everything is actually uh, sorted by SKU so it sorts everything from top to bottom um, I may change few things in here for to make it more juicy so like for example ask uh, which one you want to sort it with SKU or description things like that and then we have six for shipping items which you're essentially going to ship the items 
uh, which means I go like uh, something I'm gonna hit like uh, uh, six for ship items uh, and uh, it's gonna sh put everything in sh in, a, in a shipping order uh, um, uh, shipping order um, file and uh, essentially the items are uh, sh are shipped and data file is closed and everything is done you can start doing with another one so that essentially becomes the whole application that you're running and uh, some of these are like one of them at least I'm gonna uh, design it in a way that you do not have enough uh, uh, functionalities over here to accomplish it which means you need to add uh, uh, more uh, custom functions by yourself like if I, I I either change sort or shipping items one of these two like if I add sort only on SKU you can do it because you have something to receive the SKU to see what the SKU is um, but if I um, like if I ask you to um, uh, yeah, so but for example for shipping items if I told you to uh, ship only the items that are uh, uh, Exactly uh, To the amount that we have so we have enough of them ship those then the story is going to be different So um, I'll explain I'll try to put some twist in one of them for the ones who want to get 100% so you can get 90% for all of them but that one is going to be tricky for those people who really uh, want to uh, go above uh, 90% and uh, get the 100% of it so that you are you have to go back and change few things for that thing to be implementable uh, are we okay with this All right, so at the end, we exit the program and exiting the program and we are done. And that's essentially what your uh, uh, aid management system is going to work. Any questions before we, can be, we leave the class? Zhu, go ahead. I I have a question about uh, roof three. Uh, in a pre uh, perishable item, uh, I think the uh in pressure perishable item there is expiry date, and uh, we need to uh, make a uh, uh, copy construction. So we need to copy the date. But in the data uh, class, uh, there is no copy construction. Should we construct one or? Do something when else. You, if you are doing the copying, you have to copy everything. Yes. If you don't do it, it won't do it for you. Because you are taking over, you have to make sure everything is copied. Yes. One so way of, one way of so uh, I have a question for your item. Have you done it? Yes. Your item when your item copies, does the so everything is copied properly? Yes. So all you need to do is call, like for example, when you are copying. For copying is simple. You simply call the assignment operator. So you have to go in assignment operator and think of all this, right? Yes. So when you are actually doing that in Perishable, you have to uh, go and make sure that all the dates that you are doing are actually being copied properly. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I mean ex exact uh, except the item. Uh, I because in perishable we have a new uh, day, uh, new uh, attribute about the expiry date. But uh, uh, we need to copy the expiry date. But uh, in the data class, there's no copy construction. If there's no copy construction, you just assign it to the new one. There is no problem with that sure okay okay and Thank test you. it see write it see if it gets copied or not it's a good experiment okay see if you if the date is carried properly during copying because we are essentially doing that right when we are in here when we are am i testing the copying in here if i'm not then i have to do it no you, you didn't oh god i'm gonna i know why i removed the thing that did it I removed the function that it did it, so I'm gonna have a new version coming out for it. Ooh, I'm a bad boy. Because uh, the main of uh, milestone three, 
did I remove it main of milestone 3 so this is the main of milestone 3 in main of milestone 3 we are not testing that either let me check and see if I'm actually doing anything in here I thought that I did that no I didn't thank you for reminding me so I'm gonna put the rule of three for the other one make sure that it's actually working I'm gonna pass something by value when I'm saving it and so um, the main over here probably I'm gonna change it to something like this so um, this entry and save that we have that is saving every and each of them what I will do over here is uh, write a function like this so I'm just gonna do it and it's gonna be version 1.1 for that um, I th uh, yeah so what I'm gonna do over here is gonna be void something like save uh, uh, product and I'm gonna have I product uh, reference P or oh, actually mm, for here I'm gonna actually put a product so I'm gonna say over here perishable perishable P and then save it like that and that takes care of everything then we can see so when I'm saving in here instead of calling the save like that um, or maybe I do it in loading for display yeah I'm gonna do it for display that's easier so we don't have to so I'm gonna have it add a display function over here for all these things that I'm displaying in linear and uh, regular what I'm gonna do over here for this descriptive one over here I'm gonna have a display perishable function added so in here is gonna be void display display I'm gonna do it like that and add a perishable P so this is going to actually work like this so let me just add it over here so let me bring this over here this is what I'm going to do so in here I'm gonna actually take this out right over here and put it right over here there you go and call that instead and that takes care of copying all right and when I'm reading in here so after loading I can actually do something like this um, or actually I'm gonna do it here so in here I'm gonna say um, where do I do it perishable I'll find something I just want to perishable Q <laughs> something like that I'm gonna add something in here and then uh, probably I'll do something so it actually uh, works properly for for all of them so mm, yeah I have an idea on what to do so in here I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna add something to descriptive to to have assignment set and display over here will copy it so everything's gonna work properly um, so we can test that and thank you very much for reminding me um, any other question before we continue yes Pavel uh, misclick misclick all right okay so I'm gonna set this up make sure uh, it tests uh, the assignment and everything's gonna be updated and I'm gonna ask the props to update their configuration files uh, a new version of this thing's gonna come up okay um, so that's uh, that's it it's all it's gonna do in here the the outcome is gonna be almost the same the only thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna use an assignment over here and a copying to make sure that uh, they're both set properly uh, any questions before we go any questions to chat at. hi professor can I ask you about workshop 9 workshop 9 uh, let me pause this because then it becomes irrelevant so let me pause this yes so people no question about the thing we're good so no yes. questions good for 
this one. So nobody's asking anything good. So I'm going to pause.